Okay, so today we're going to start lesson eight on illusions. Now remember an illusion is basically when um, a story or an author references something that most readers should be familiar with, okay, from like another story or something in history or something like that. So you the author doesn't explain that particular item, but instead they allude to it assuming that you already know that particular or know about that particular person or event or whatever it is. Okay, so if you haven't read a story or text that it's alluding to, then you need to look it up, right? If it, if it alludes to something and you're like, I don't know what that is, then you would look it up. Um, an example, if you look at the screen here at the bottom left is the Little Mermaid, right? And I say, if I said Katie's a good swimmer, but she's no Ariel, that means that I'm alluding to Ariel from the Walt Disney movie, The Little Mermaid, right? And I'm assuming that everybody's seen The Little Mermaid or at least knows that Ariel is The Little Mermaid, right? And that she's a mermaid. And this would imply that Katie is not as natural in the water as a mermaid might be, right? So we're going to go ahead and watch a couple of videos, really short videos on illusions. What are illusions? While reading or watching The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, you were introduced to Cinna, the stylist for Katniss. If the mention of this name doesn't ring a bell, that's probably because you've never read Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, which in turn has caused you to miss out on a major illusion. When I say illusion, no, I'm not talking about Katniss's dress made of gems that reflected light, projecting the illusion of fire. That's illusion with an eye, like a magic trick. An allusion, beginning with an A, is a literary element. It is a brief and indirect reference to a person, place, thing, or idea of historical, cultural, literary, or political significance. It does not describe in detail the person or thing to which it refers. It is just a passing comment, and the writer expects the reader to have enough knowledge to spot the allusion and understand its importance in a text. The writer expects you to be like Sherlock Holmes, investigating and analyzing these references. Hey, did you catch the illusion I just used? The reason why writers choose to use this literary technique is because it enables them to simplify complex ideas and emotions. Readers are expected to comprehend the complex ideas by comparing the emotions of the writer to the references given by them. So let's go back to Cinna, the stylist in The Hunger Games. In Julius Caesar, there are two characters by the name of Cinna. One is a poet who ends up being murdered, and the other is one of the politicians who is involved in the plot to assassinate Caesar. What connections can you make between these two characters and Cinna from The Hunger Games? For one, Cinna isn't simply a stylist, but also an artist with his ability to make political statements through Katniss's outfits. Some might say that his costumes are quite poetic in a way, just like Caesar's Cinna the poet. And two, just like Cinna the conspirator in Julius Caesar, this name indicates Cinna is a character who is plotting against President Snow's oppressive ruling over Pan Am. Did you catch that? Just by knowing what Suzanne Collins' illusion signifies, the reader can gain a deeper, more thorough understanding of Cinna and his emotions. Understanding and utilizing the power of illusions is what separates good readers and writers from greatly skilled ones. My challenge for you is twofold. One, try to be more aware of illusions when you read. If you think you found one, just look it up to see if you're right. And two, try to start incorporating illusions into your own writing. It's an impressive way to show your abilities as a talented writer. And it will help you to better convey complex ideas to your readers. Now get out there and find those illusions or create your own. You can do it. Imagine this is you. Now, imagine you threw a piece of crumpled paper into this bucket. What might you say? Kobe! This is an example of an illusion. An illusion is when a person or text makes an indirect reference to a well-known person, event, or concept. If I said, you're basically Einstein, that would be an illusion. To 
go back to the first example, yelling Kobe when you take a shot is an allusion to Kobe Bryant, the basketball player. As another example, if you were a parent and said, my child's being a little Hitler today, what would that mean? Well, if I was to choose between this and this, I would choose this one. Now that you know what an illusion is, the question is, why do we use them? If I said, my house has lots of plants, you might picture this. However, if I used an illusion and said, my house looks like the Garden of Eden, you might picture this. See how much more descriptive and entertaining illusions are? Now let's review. An illusion is... When a person or text makes an indirect reference to an important person, event, or concept, they are used to add additional description and make the writing more interesting. Happy learning, all you young Einsteins! Okay, so you can see how allusions can help your writing be a lot more descriptive, and it really helps the author to get the connotation um, or that image, that visual image that they want to get across. So it really helps with imagery, right? Um, so make sure that you're looking for allusions in stories and that you're using them in your own stories. And a little hint, allusions are on your unit test. So make sure you know what they are.